we have two speakers coming up together at the same time. Um, the first one is colorblind, which probably hurts a little bit doing data science, has lived in three countries in LATAM, and is a retired DJ. The other speaker is a mountain climber, and just recently, this photo, this might not be the photo, you have to tell me this is the right one. He took this photo, he did take this photo, because he climbs mountains, but he also just did a five day run in the Sahara. Five days. Please, everyone welcome, Burr and Igor. I guess you'll have to guess who's who's. <laughs> Hi everybody, we're really, really excited to, uh, to be here and to be here in person specifically. Saying hello to everyone who is joining us virtually, but for now at least we don't have to say, can you see my screen? Uh, <laughs> um, to give a quick intro to us, we work, both work at Meta and uh, this is Bernardo and I'm Igor. Hi, my name is Bernardo Lares. I'm a marketing science partner. I'm uh, Venezuelan, but I'm living in Colombia. <laughs> and uh, and uh, my name is Igor, or Iggy, as uh, some people call me. Uh, I'm based in, uh, in London, in the UK, and um, I'm the one who actually climbed that, uh, climbed that mountain. So that was, that was a picture that I took uh, back in November in Nepal. So, but anyway, but it, unrelated to the talk we have, the, the talk we have is about, uh, advert we both work at Meta, we work bo both work in digital advertising, uh, and as you probably know, there is a huge amount of change going on in the advertising uh, ecosystem in the, uh, and industry. So since about the last three years, there have been maybe 50 different regulations, starting in, you know, in Europe, uh, in the EU with GDPR, then there was CCPA in California, LPG, LGPD in Brazil, and another plenty of, uh, of regulations, giving more power to the people to decide what they do with their data, um, along with browser, uh, browser changes with deprecations of cookies and deprecations of ways of how uh, digital industry used to measure, target, and optimize, uh, optimize campaigns. Uh, and that itself has led into challenges when it comes to uh, all kinds of things, starting from targeting to optimization, but also measurement. So we are in the meta marketing science team and we work with advertisers and agencies try to understand what kind of elements of campaigns are working and then try to devise uh, strategies to increase the return on the, on the marketing investment. Uh, as such, what we have seen that we, because of these changes and because of uh, some of the measurement techniques and tools that have been trusted and used for many, many years uh, are, are you know, impacted. This impact is not binary, it's not you know, on and off, and there, there is a spectrum. And on one side of the spectrum, we have tools such as multi-touch attribution uh, and that requires person you know, log level data or, or some kind of PII to be used. This is completely now impacted and almost uh, not viable at all. But on the other side, we, we, we see a re-emergence of tools and techniques that have existed since even before the internet uh, have existed. So econometrics or geo experiments, uh, econometrics we, we refer to as often as MMM, uh, has, has now raised into, into much more prominence. Uh, so just to sort of put, put a little definition of what do we mean by econometrics and MMM. So MMM is a statistical tool that uses regression analysis to understand the components of marketing and non-marketing activity. Try to correlate, it's a correlation method in a way, try to bring, uh, try, try to understand a, a trend over time by building a regression, by regression, by building regression models. Uh, so this is how it looks. It's totally aggregated time series that is, uh, that uh, the analyst would, would uh, take the data over the last two to three years and try to build a, build a model from it. Uh, using this, this kind of technique, we can understand uh, what is the proportion of media that is driven by the different channels. And here on the right side, you can see that you can actually go into quite a granularity uh, of, of, uh, of a sort of like how, how did the business perform and you can understand. Now this approach has been around since maybe 50s or really into 70s, but it has a lot of challenges and the fact is that it's built manually by hand by analysts presents a huge uh, challenge because it's slow because it ha and it has a lot of bias. So a lot of analyst bias, a lot of human bias is sort of projected into, into create, creation of this, uh, of this formula. We think that it's not a challenge as such, or it's an opportunity. And uh, Bernardo will talk about like, how have we approached this in, in our open source project uh, that, is, uh, that is currently available. But it's fair to say, we think that this 
uh, method that is old and handmade can be can be dramatically improved, uh, and it can actually become a machine learning supported. Uh, continuous uh, granular analysis that can bring even aspects of, uh, of uh, experiments and, and uh, the ground truth measurement to improve, the, to improve the overall delivery. So this is so seriously how it looks. Uh, so taking, say, taking uh, the best of the, of the classical approaches, uh, the strategic, the, the, uh, the tactical, uh, and, and creating a new contemporary version. And this actualization of this contemporary version of, uh, of marketing with models or econometrics is what we call Project Robin. And Bernie will take us through what it is. Thanks, Iggy. So to have a better understanding of, uh, of what motivates us to promote this project, uh, let's quickly check what is uh, Robin's vision, what is our goal in marketing science, and uh, uh, finally, what is Robin? So we are looking forward to build a community of MMM experts uh, to leverage open source code and techniques to create and build uh, a, a more robust and transparent methodology, especially for marketing. In marketing science, our team is uh, to help all businesses grow based in best practices using data, science, and uh, uh, privacy. And Robin, what is Robin? Robin is an R open source package uh, we've developed to enable semi-automatic uh, marketing mix models in a way that we are minimizing bias using uh, advanced and modern techniques. So what do we mean by contemporary methods? So traditional MMMs are usually uh, built by experts in the matter. They are manually built, they are slow, they are heavily biased, and they take a lot of time to train. So that makes them like less uh, actionable, given that you can, uh, maybe if you are a large advertiser and, and you have budget, you can, buy, you can uh, have one or two uh, models per year. Uh, but with Robin, we enable a more dynamic, and you can refresh as fast as you uh, can gather your data. Another common problem is that uh, traditional MMMs have uh, like the same parameters and same uh, ad stock transformations, uh, which uh, we customize using uh, Nevergrad. That uh, it's an, a, a library that helps us optimize the hyperparameters and pick which of these uh, values uh, better transform the data to reflect your true values. We also use rich regression and regularization to, to, take, um, to deal with multicollinearity and, and penalize it um, and avoid overfitting. We used uh, a Profit, which is uh, another R package, uh, open source as well by, by Meta, to enrich our data set with trend and seasonality decompositions. And finally, and one of the most important features, is that we push forward to provide experimental results, experimental data. So we run experiments to uh, measure uh, incrementality and uh, provide causal information instead of pure correlations, uh, which uh, traditional uh, MMMs only validate with statistical uh, correlations and data. So now that I've spoken about uh, all of these uh, interesting uh, techniques, i like to show you that there's a bunch of other techniques and, uh, uh, that are already implemented. They are all trying to minimize uh, bias since the moment we ingest the data until we provide the, the, the results. But we don't have more than 20 minutes today to talk about it, so feel free to reach later to speak about any of this. We're going to focus on these four pillars. They are uh, mitigating bias in the MMM training selection and decision making. So uh, as I've mentioned a couple of times, MMM it relies heavily on the analyst that is uh, training the model and selecting the variables. So we use uh, multi-objective hyperparameter optimization with uh, evolutionary algorithm. That means that uh, we use uh, Nevergrad, which is another open source um, library for Python, but we've enabled it with Reticulate, so we're in safe zones. <laughs> Uh, so th what it does is tr it try to minimize the errors, so the model error, the decomposition distance that uh, reflects how different uh, it is to the, your model, 
And if you are providing the calibration data, it uh, also uses to minimize the error. And we use Pareto front optimal results, given that uh, we run all these simulations, all these iterations, we can have uh, maybe 10,000, 20,000 models, and we pick those that are closer to, uh, the, to the edges, which are the ones that have the, lower, the lowest errors. We also use uh, Profit to run uh, the composition uh, out in an automated way, so we minimize the bias and uh, like automatically leave that information to the algorithm and not to the analyst to enrich our data and uh, make it make a better fit. And reach regression with lambda as hyperparameter to, uh, to deal with uh, overfitting and uh, multicollinearity. And lambda as a hyperparameter, given it's a parameter we can optimize, we, uh, pro we give this variable to Nevergrad, so it's going to uh, play with the values and see uh, which lambda will minimize the three errors we're optimizing towards. Uh, we also have uh, uh, some criteria to let the user know if, it, uh, if uh, the, uh, the algorithm has converged or if we think that you will have further possible better solution based on standard deviations and means comparing the initial iterations with the last ones. And we have a, a super interesting clustering K, uh, with k-means. So once we have the 10,000 models we're reduced to maybe 100 using the Pareto front, uh, then with those 100 we run clustering k-means with uh, the ROI results and we group those models that are similar and pick those that have the minimum combined error. So that way from 100, we maybe select six, seven, eight, that are the ones that the analysts will inspect and compare one by one. And uh, we also have, uh, as I mentioned, one of the most important and relevant uh, things we have here with Robin is that we believe that randomized controlled trials or RCT experiments are, uh, are key and the best way to pick which are the best models. So when we provide this uh, calibration information, we use uh, incremental results that are basically what we know is true because we, were, we measured it and we discard those models that are away from the truth. Uh, when we do this, we add this third objective, uh, objective function to minimize towards uh, to the Nevergrad algorithm. So once you run Robin, then you have a, a list of outputs that will make them uh, pretty useful to be able to pick which of these models are the ones that better reflect the, the business and that uh, you will continue towards to optimize your uh, budget allocation across all media channels. So we have uh, one of the main outputs is this uh, one pager that it contains like uh, the unique ID that, that for that model, the performance metrics, and some visuals with um, the decomposition, the weights for each parameter, the uh, share e effect versus share of spend, so you know which ones are more effective. Uh, the results uh, for the ad stock transformation, that means they carry over for each of your media, and, uh, uh, and the regression itself. And the last methodology I would like to speak today is one of the most valuable uh, functionalities we have, we have with Robin. Once you selected the model, then you can run several scenarios uh, based on the budget you uh, currently run or a, a, a hypothetical um, budget and the constraints. So we use a nonlinear solver uh, on the back end to search for that combination based on the saturation curves. Uh, to optimize your, your uh, portfolio and the allocation across your media paid channels. So <laughs> as uh, you might expect, this is a, a, a project that has evolved and has changed uh, naturally. Uh, we spoke last year, so the ones that uh, heard about this project, it was like a bunch of scripts and it was uh, a good idea, but not readily implemented. But we still have a list of uh, things we want to do or feature requests uh, we've received. Uh, the first one is a Python wrapper. Uh, so we can enable to Python users uh, to uh, use Robin and uh, 
we are not developing in Python, first because we are not Python coders, and uh, secondly because it is still changing and evolving and we are still having a new feature request and things implemented. So uh, we ha we'd have to wait to, to, to have um, a fully developed Python version. We will enable nesting, nested modeling for more advanced users if you want to disaggregate information based on, on brands, on geographical data, forecasting and prediction. For that, we'll have to enable time series validation as well. And it, it's a, there's a UI coming up with a shiny app. So in case you're not quite friendly with coding, then you can run the app, play with the, the demo, uh, the, with the dummy data we have, and you'll get an idea of what the outputs and uh, how to deal with, with your MMMs. So um, I'm really happy to be here again with all of you sharing about this. Hopefully you can join us to be part of the community, maybe as intellectual, curious people, or as uh, active users. Uh, we have uh, the Facebook group where a lot of people, and I've met some of you, uh, asking questions around. Uh, we try to make it as uh, active as possible. We have great people collaborating. And of course, we have the GitHub repository where the code lives. And since like three weeks ago, we've enabled uh, Robin in CRAN. So we're really proud to be the second uh, R package that comes from Meta in CRAN. And uh, you can install the, the, the most stable version from there. And also we have uh, our website. We have a lot of great content where you can read more about, about us. We have some success cases of uh, actual advertisers that have used Robin to optimize their uh, budget and they have measured it, uh, its impact. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah. yeah, and visit us and join us. And uh, thank you all to, for well, being we here. We have a bit more. We have some of the cases. <laughs> so, some of the cases we do have uh, because we have about <laughs> because we have about three minutes. Um, they wanted to clap. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, yeah, we have some of the cases. I mean, in the last uh, two minutes or so, we do have. Oops, where is it? Ah, yeah, it come up. So, uh, some of the cases that we have. So, for example, Resident is a, is an Israeli. Uh, Ecom, they have uh, they have used Robin. They have been with us since like very early versions uh, as our valued beta testers. Um, they really valued the speed, so they tried for about five months to implement this uh, inside their organization. But using Robin, they were able to get meaningful models in about five days. Uh, this sort of speed and this sort of logic is sort of carrying over through of uh, of the many cases that we have, as Bernardo said, on the, on the website. The other one is, um, is Witkin. I think they are Polish uh, wheelie, bag, uh, wheelie bags uh, company. They are a very similar story. They, they, they really valued Robin for its speed of implementation and for the quality of the, of the models. So these are, let's say, digital disruptors or like smaller companies that have maybe uh, didn't have it before. But from the other cases that we have seen, even companies like Unilever, who you know, arguably maybe invented and the marketing mix modeling, it's sort of present form in, in sometimes in the 50s and 60s, uh, have found value in it. Uh, so that, for example, Coppel, who is a leading Mexican department store, and, and so many others. So really, we, we, we think that this, this tool, being it open source, enables people to transparently understand and uh, what's going on and, de and democratize a, a, a technique that was typically restricted. Um, and we really invite everyone to help us drive it forward, give us feedback, use it, and, and let us know what you think. So I think we are just bang on time. So we really thank you. Thank you for your attention. Um, and yeah, please visit us on the website or any of the, any of the resources. So thank you again, and have a really lovely day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.